Hey everyone, welcome to Daily Prophetic. Today is a little bit different. We're going to pray or I'm going to pray for you. You're going to pray along. So I'm excited about this one. I want to I wanna share something that happened yesterday, um, which is so funny after the, the live stream that we had that someone messaged me and I don't know the person. Um, I think they might have attended a meeting or something here in South Africa, but it's not someone I know. And they messaged me afterwards and they did not watch the live stream, but they took a nap yesterday afternoon. Uh, The live streams are 6 p.m. South African time. So they took a nap and they were actually sleeping through the live stream. And then afterwards, they only watched the live stream. But when they were having a nap, this person had a dream. And in the dream, I was I was there and I gave them a scripture. So I had my Bible or I had my notes with me in the dream that another person dreamed. And I pointed out the scripture that I was actually planning to pray with you today uh, for this live stream. So the person didn't watch the live stream. Um, had no connection with what we're talking about, what it's about. But in the dream, the Lord showed her already the scripture that was going to be prayed for. Now, if that isn't bizarre, if that isn't God, then I don't know what is. Um, It just astonishes me. To me, I just take it as confirmation that the Lord is in this. He's leading this daily prophetic live stream. Um, So yes, welcome. And I'm so happy so many of you are joining If you are busy, just maybe put your phone somewhere, put your earphones in, uh, whatever you got to do. But I really want to pray for you. So I I really want you to be present. And if you can, get your Bible, uh, look at the scriptures with me, write them down, study them afterwards. Uh, These are the scriptures that the Lord gave me regarding yesterday. Now, yesterday's live, I'm going to quickly recap. I talked about some unusual things are happening in people's lives. Unusual warfare, unusual opposition by the enemy is taking place. For me personally, it was getting three flat tires. I got one and my my dad got two in the very same week. Okay, now that is abnormal. I, it's, I think it's the first time that I got a flat tire in two or three years. Okay, so that that's not normal, guys. And we have to be alert for these kind of things, um, any kind of usually, you know, patterns of of uh, bad luck or, or these kind of attacks is it always raises my my spiritual antenna. And I'm like, OK, something is going on. This is not normal. Um, there must be a spiritual reason for this. So, yeah, with that all said, um, a few things actually transpired after yesterday and this whole week. There's just this this heaviness in the spirit that there is great opposition right now. And I believe that it is for your breakthrough. I believe it is for contending for the promises that God gave you. So this is the very purpose of this live stream. I just want to pray for you. I want to pray for you for your promises that God has made you, for your breakthrough that the Lord is, he's also fighting for you. Um So let's jump right into it, okay? Holy Spirit, I just pray that you guide my words, guide my prayers, guide everything that we do right now. And Jesus, may you get all the glory. Holy Spirit, I pray that you highlight the scriptures to me, highlight the scriptures to the people listening. And Father, I pray, let it not just be words spoken, but Lord, may it it be spirit and life. May it change the atmosphere of the people listening May it change the atmosphere of their lives. May it change their situations. Father, your word says that the Bible is sharper than two than any two-edged sword. So, Father, we are using the word of God right now to fight uh, spiritual matters. That, Father, our war is not against flesh and blood. So, Lord, we use the spiritual tools that you have given us, the spiritual weapons that you have given us to wage warfare, Father. For your people whom you love, who Jesus died for on the cross of Calvary. And um, we just declare, Jesus, that you get all the glory. 
and praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Amen. Guys, I'm sitting here by the ocean right now, and I'm just overlooking this beautiful view. It's a bit overcast, so I hope you guys can see me um, okay. It looks like you can, but man, you know, every time I am, um, you know, just admiring a view, I'm just captivated by God's creation. You know, in Romans, it tells us that all creation, you can see God in all creation. Um, and, you know, if you just take a moment to get quiet with the Lord, that's why I chose to come and sit here and pray for you, is to be close to the Lord, to be in nature. And that's when I feel closest to the Lord. Amen. So the first scripture, the Lord gave me three scriptures that I want to cover for us. And I want to pray uh, over your life. So the first one is, and you probably know these scriptures very well, is Isaiah 54 and 17. Now that reads, uh, once again, I got the NIV version today here uh, with me. And it says, no weapon forged against you will prevail. And you will refute every tongue that, uh, that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. So, Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you, Father, that we can come, Holy Spirit, and lift up your name, lift up your word. And, Father, we just pray this uh, into our lives. We pray this over our lives, Father, that no weapon formed against us, no weapon formed against anyone listening to this live stream, no weapon formed against anyone partnering with your word, Father, that the enemy's plans will not prosper that any um, sneaky plan that the enemy has planned months ahead over your people's lives. Father, we break that right now in Jesus' name. We declare it null and void. It will have no effect and no power and no authority over their lives right now. In Jesus' name, we declare that, that no weapon formed against us will prosper. In the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against us will prosper in the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare it over every person uh, listening to this, that Father, that even if there are assignments of death over people's lives, we cancel those contracts by the blood of Jesus Christ, not by my words, not by my will, but by the blood of Jesus, because you have paid the price for us. You have bought us. We are free, and thank you, Jesus, for that. So, Father, every single demonic plan, every single demonic uh, device aimed or weapon aimed against our lives, we break the power thereof right now in Jesus' mighty name. If you come into agreement with this, just, just say amen right there where you are, or even just in your heart, and just pray with me. And this is something that I love is Zechariah 2. Now, uh, funny enough, I actually gave a word on Zechariah 4 just the other day. I think it was a day or two ago, two days ago. And um, this is Zechariah 2 and 5, but also verse 8 is so powerful. And it says, And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. Man, isn't that so good? Let me. I'm just going to read that again. You really have to get this. And I myself, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord. And I will be its glory within. Guys, I'm, I, can't, I can't help but just, you know, the, the analogy used here that God will be the glory within. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. As the book of Corinthians tells us that, uh, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? The glory of God dwells within you. And Father, we just pray that you set a, a hedge of fire around our lives, around our possessions. Father, I pray that you put a hedge of fire around every single person that's listening right now. Father, around their finances, around their house, around their car, around their children, around their uh, workplace that they're at, around their possessions, that Satan has no hold over them. Satan cannot touch their possessions in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray that you just put a hedge of fire. Father, your, your word says in Hebrews 
that you are an all-consuming fire. So, Father, we pray that you set your angels around us, Lord. Set your angels around everything that we own, everything that we are, around our personhood, around our family members, that Satan cannot touch anything of us. He can't touch anything we own. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I'm just also reminded of Proverbs 10.22. Proverbs 10.22 is coming to mind right now. Thank you, Lord. And it says, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth. And it comes without painful toil. So, Father, I pray that. I pray Proverbs 10.22 right now over your people. That, Father, your blessing, the covenant, because we are one with Jesus Christ by his blood, we are in the new covenant. Father, thank you that we are a part of your body. That the blessing is upon our lives. And thank you, Lord, for financial breakthrough for everyone listening here. Thank you, Father, that you care for them. Thank you, Lord, for what your word says in Matthew 6. That look at the birds of the air. They neither, they neither uh, toil nor spin or gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father cares for them. Aren't you more valuable than they? Thank you, Jesus. I see that scripture, Matthew 6. I believe it's in verse 26. I know it's in Matthew 6, but I believe it's verse 26. There's someone that read that in their daily devotion this morning even. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for that, that praying soul, Lord, that they need a breakthrough, Father, that they need provision, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Lord, that this may be confirmation to them. And we're going to hear about that testimony. That, Father, this will be confirmation to them that you heard their prayers literally this morning is what I see. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I also thank you for your word in Zechariah 2 and 8. That it says, for whoever touches the apple of your eye. Whoever touches us touches the apple of your eye. So, Lord, I thank you that we are the apple of your eye. It's talking about Israel here. But also, we are the apple of God's eye. So, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for that, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you will not allow destruction to come upon your people. Father, that you will protect them. You will not allow the enemy to plunder them. You will not allow the enemy to steal what is not his. Father, thank you that because we are in covenant with you, if the enemy dares touch us, he's touching the apple of your eye. You know, you know what happens when, well, you know what happens when someone touches the apple of your eye? You flinch, right? Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want God to flinch. That, that will not turn out well for you. Well, God doesn't flinch, but you know what I mean. That will not turn out well for you. So thank you, Jesus, that you are our protector, our redeemer. Wow, thank you, Jesus. You know, Jesus came as the lamb. He already came as the lamb, but he's also the lion of Judah. Do not mistake in Jesus for a, a, a helpless lamb. He is the lion of Judah. Remember that. Remember that. He's the lion and the lamb that was slain before the world was even, before the foundations of this earth was laid, as the book of Revelation tells us. So Jesus, thank you. We glorify you and we honor you as the Lamb of God, but also the Lion of Judah. Thank you that you are a roaring Lion of Judah. Guys, I'm from South Africa, so we, we know lions, okay? You might, maybe where you live, you might have mountain lions and cougars and pumas and bears and moose. Moose are quite dangerous, but... Um, let me tell you, a lion is, is the king of the jungle. A lion. And Jesus is the lion of Judah. You don't want to mess with the lion. So, Father, thank you that you will fight for us. That you are our banner. Thank you, Jesus, that one of your redemptive names is Jehovah Nisi. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our protection. 
Father, thank you that you protect your people, everyone listening right now, that they may receive the protection of, of Jesus Christ right now. Lord, I also just feel led to pray that you will send your angels, dispatch your angels to protect your people. Um, angels are, are the messengers of God, but they also, they only obey the word of God. I do not command angels. I ask the Lord to send them because they have to obey the word of God. And the word of God says that he will be a fire around us and the glory will dwell within. So Father, thank you that your word also says in, in the Psalms that whoever dwells in the shadow of the Almighty, the shadow of the Almighty, there is protection. So thank you for that, Lord. So Lord, I pray that you dispatch fresh angels, fresh angels to everyone listening, surround surround uh, their houses, surround their property, Lord, surround their finances. And Father, I also just want to pray for let righteousness, let righteousness come. That Father, people who have been wrongfully uh, accused, people who have been wrongfully um, indicted, people who have been wrongfully um, just spoken against, sued, lawsuits, whatever it is, whatever it is, Father, I pray that let your justice come. Let your justice come and let your righteousness come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. More of your presence, more of your presence. Lord, right there where every single person is, right there in their home, I pray that they may feel the presence of God right now, right there where they are. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to read for us Ephesians 6 from verse 10. This is about the armor of God. The armor of God. Now that testimony that I shared in the beginning of the video, this is the scripture that I showed her in that dream. If you, if you came late, you don't know what I'm talking about. Go back to the beginning, please, and watch this. Um, one of the people on the, on the channel had a dream before this live stream, obviously, and I gave her this scripture to pray. So I believe the Lord is leading us to pray this scripture. Ephesians 6 and 10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full, garmer, the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, and it is here, you may be able to stand your ground, and even after you have done everything to stand, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests, all kinds of prayers and requests. I hope you got that. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Guys, as I was, as I was uh, reading this, as I was preparing for this, I want to point something out that the Lord highlighted to me. So it mentions three or four times while we're putting on the armor of God, the, the word commissions us to stand 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 firm i'm going to point that out for you right now it says put on the full armor of god so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against spiritual forces and then it says in verse 13 that you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. 
And then it talks about putting on the armor of God. So guys, we're going to pray. We're going to put on the armor of God. This is in fact something that you can do on the daily. Every morning you can even do this. Um, I pray this often. Guys, put on the armor of God. Meditate upon it. Ask the Lord to strengthen you that you are able to stand, that you are able to withstand the schemes of the enemy with the armor of God. You know, there are six items in the armor of God. And you know what the seventh one is? That you must pray in the spirit, all kinds of prayers. Listen, let me read it for you. Verse 18, and it says, this is after you've taken up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So even after you have put on the armor of God, stand and pray. Stand and pray. It's not a passive thing. You don't put on the armor of God and you just forget about it. There is, There needs to be activation. Stand and pray. All kinds of prayers and requests. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Father, I thank you for every single person listening right now that, Lord, that we can come and as a as a prophetic act and as a community of believers in Jesus Christ, that we can come right now, Father, and we can put on the armor of God, as you say in your word in Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we can put on the boots of the readiness of the gospel of peace. Father, we can gird our loins with the, the belt of truth. Lord, thank you that we can put on the breastplate of righteousness, Father. That we can, we are called to be righteous in your name, Lord, not self righteous, but through the blood of Jesus, we are made righteous in God's eyes. Thank you, Lord, that we can put on the helmet of salvation, the helm of salvation. Thank you, Lord, that we can pick up our, our shields of faith to withstand every single fiery dart of the enemy. And also pick up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, that we can apply the Word of God to our lives as we are doing right now, Father, in faith, applying the Word of God. And thank you, Lord, that we can come and always pray all kinds of prayers and requests. Father, your Word also says that uh, we must come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly to the throne of grace in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord, that we have free access through the blood of Jesus, that the veil is torn. That we can come freely to your throne, Jesus. Lord, that I have just as much access to go to the throne as the high priest in the Old Testament. Thank you for that, Lord, that I can be a, a priest forever in your house, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we all can come boldly before you right now. Declare our needs. Declare our needs. I just feel like a, a holy presence right now. That just right there where you are, make your needs known to the Lord. If you can, do it verbally. If you can't speak, just do it in your heart. The Lord knows anyway what's in your heart. You can't hide anything from Him. In the book of Psalms, I believe it's 26, it says... God examines our hearts. Actually, He cross-examines our hearts. Now, if you know anything about law terminology, cross-examination means that they look at everything. They look at everything. So God sees everything. We can't hide anything from you. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord, that we can be completely vulnerable, completely transparent before you, Jesus Christ. Wow, isn't that freedom? Guys, that, that is freedom. To be able to come before the Lord, declare all your sins, all everything that you've done wrong, you can declare before the Lord and repent of that. That is freedom. We don't serve. God is not angry. He's not an angry God. He's a loving God. He's, he's happy. He's, he's so happy to see you every time that you come to him. He's not an angry God. We don't serve an angry God. That's freedom. He's a good father. So come to him. Declare your needs. Repent of your sins. Get, get that stuff out of your heart. Get that stuff out of your life. Come on. Come on, somebody. Just type amen. Wow. I just feel the love of Jesus Christ right now. I just feel the love of the Father. I feel acceptance right now. And I feel like transparency. 
The Lord can see everything that's going on. The Lord knows um, he's a just God. He's a righteous God. Mm. Thank you for that. Praise God for that. You know, would it, wouldn't it be so confusing if God wasn't righteous, if God wasn't just? If he wasn't a good father, wouldn't that be so confusing? I can't even imagine that. Thank you, Jesus, just for your nature, just for your, your personality, who you are, your perfect nature, your perfect love, perfect father. Thank you, Jesus. You are so worthy of being praised. You are so worthy. Thank you, Father, that as I look upon your creation right now, as I look upon your creation, Father, all my, all my circumstances in my life, all my little issues just feel so small if I look at the greatness of God. If I look at the greatness of your creation, Lord, I'm looking over the ocean and I'm, I'm, I'm just seeing you created all of this, Lord. You created everything. How small are my problems to the creator of the universe? Someone needs to hear this. How small are my problems? And I'm not saying you're not going through some stuff. Because I know some people are. Man, even I'm going through some stuff. I'm human. But when I look at creation, I realize that my trust is in Him. My trust is in the creator of the universe. I want to show this to you. I hope you can still hear me when I do this. Have a look. There you can see. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We glorify you for your greatness. Father, and as we, as we look over your creation, that our problems are so small and so distant. Thank you, Jesus. Father, also thank you that as I'm reminded of, of the ocean and the sea, the sand, the Father in Psalm 139, it says that your thoughts are good towards us and they are so numerous, they are more than the sand of the sea. They are more than the sand of the sea. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Wow. Can you just imagine that, that the thoughts and plans that God has for you is greater and it's more numerous than the sand of the sea you can't wrap your head around that can you it's impossible it is impossible for the human mind to conceive that i want to i want to read uh, zechariah 2 and 8 for us again i believe the lord is highlighting something here for us let me just find it real quick Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I just spoke about the, the greatness and the awesomeness of God and creation, His creation. Now, what the Lord is saying in Zechariah 2 and 8 is that you are the apple of His eye. You are the apple of His eye. God of the universe. He loves you so much. And there are some people that need to hear this. Some people are going through some deep, deep waters right now. That you are the apple of his eye. You are his most precious possession. He's not going to let you go. He's not going to fail you. You can trust in him. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just thank you that as we start ending off this, this prayer, we thank you, Lord, that you are, are with every single person, every single person on this live stream. Father, I pray, I'm, I'm still stuck at Zechariah 2 and 5, guys, that the Lord will put a hedge of fire around you. You know what? The enemy is a snake and snakes don't like fire. They, they can't go through fire. So, Lord, I pray that you put that hedge of fire around every single person listening right now, every single person tuning in. Father, if they listen to it live, 
or they listen to it a month afterward, that it may be just as effective. Father, that these words are our spirit and truth because they come from your word. Not because I speak them, not because I pray them, but because they come from the infallible word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your people. Be with them. Protect them. And Lord, I just, I, I just pray that make them feel known. Make them feel loved. Do something for them in this day, wherever they are, that they may feel that they may feel and know your presence. That's what I pray. That's what I pray. Make them realize that you see their, their situation. You see what they're going through. You see everything about them in their lives. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we give you all the glory. We praise you. We glorify you. And you will get all the glory through our lives in our journey. And even in this channel, this, um, this YouTube channel and this ministry, you get all the glory, Jesus. All the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, guys, I hope that blessed you. Tonight, uh, tonight's you know, live stream was a little bit longer than usual, but I believe it was necessary. I want to hear about the testimonies. I believe God is, God is for you. He's going to fight for you. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're worried about, give it to the Lord. Just hand it over to Him. Just give it to the Lord. Go on your knees tonight and say, Lord, I just give it to you. And just heal to Him. Whatever your situation is, just give it to Him. He can deal with it far better than you and I can. Okay. Bless you all. We love you all. We keep on praying for you. And I'll see you then either tomorrow or the day afterwards for, the, for another daily prophetic. And I want to mention one thing before I go. I, I had a look just before I came on. We've been doing this for four weeks where it's almost every single day live stream that the Lord has, has blessed us with. Uh, a word or scripture or prayer or, you know, I wish I could share all the testimonies with you guys. But what I do want to say is that thank you for everyone that that has sent in testimonies. Um, I apologize that I that I can't get back to every single person, but I do read them and I praise Jesus for them. Thank you for that. And we give Jesus all the glory for what he is doing and how he is speaking and how he is working in his people's lives. Okay, guys, bless you and have an amazing day. Have an amazing morning, evening, whatever time it is there by you. It is 6 p.m. No, it's 6.30 p.m. over here in South Africa. And I'm going to have a good evening now. And I hope the same for you. See you then tomorrow or the day afterwards. Bless you all.